The shale gas boom of 2008 began producing stories of sudden wealth and bitter disillusionment appearing more routinely in local and regional news outlets. As news of development of the Marcellus Shale in Appalachia spread, Victoria Schweitzer, a resident of Dimmick, Pennsylvania and self-term accidental activist, found herself not just engaged in the battle on behalf of herself and some of her neighbors, but thrust onto the front line of a war she had never intended to wage. She was joined by a battery of career activists from near and far. The contamination and sudden explosion of her neighbor's water well had become a cause celeb for activists. It provided a simple and compelling symbol of something much larger and more complicated, both socially and technically, underlying events related to a debate growing nationally over the risks of onshore drilling. Subsequent events drew people from far and wide to the quiet hamlet of Dimmick. Reporters from network television, national magazines and newspapers, filmmakers, environmental advocates, politicians, and celebrity elites such as Yoko Ono and Sean Lennon. Victoria, articulate, confident, and informed, was often their first point of contact. She hosted Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and an entourage of high-profile advocates. Among other roles, Kennedy is the chief prosecuting attorney for Riverkeeper, senior attorney for the National Resources Defense Council, and president of the Waterkeeper Alliance. He was joined by Mike Richter, a Riverkeeper board member and former all-star goalie with the New York Rangers, Mark Ruffalo, actor and resident of the Catskills, and an assortment of admin administrators, board members, and staffers from the National Resources Defense Council. The Kennedy meeting represented a victory, if only a small one, for residents of Carter Road who were frustrated with Cabot oil and gas. The cause of those suing the driller for damages related to water pollution was not a popular one among all Susquehanna County residents, including innkeepers, landlords, construction contractors, and restaurateurs who counted on the industry for their livelihood, and some of whom also sat on, or were allied with, local government boards. Nor was the anti-drilling message popular with some of Victoria's land-owning neighbors, who were happy with the financial returns they were realizing from gas development. Kennedy's visit was a morale boost for accidental activists who were feeling worn down and ostracized. Victoria had the satisfaction of hearing Kennedy proclaim that these, those representing the industry all seemed to be pathological liars. You can make deals with them and they're going to break the deals. You've seen that happen at the local level. I've seen it happen at the national level. Still, Victoria reflected later, what would this visit ultimately accomplish? They're in the ivory tower, Victoria told me of the large advocacy groups in general. I'm on the battlefield and that battle is being fought now in villages being staked out by gas companies. Dimmick is already lost. I'm going village by village to help where I can.